government's vision for the next four years is to modernize agriculture, improve production efficiency, achieve food security, and profitability for our farmers, all aimed at significantly increasing agricultural productivity. Government will pursue a value addition strategy aimed at rapidly ramping up agro-processing and developing new and stable markets for our products. Our policies and interventions will encompass the full agricultural value chain and create additional businesses and job opportunities in the areas of storage, transport, processing, packaging, and marketing of agricultural produce, all of which will ensure that our farmers and fisher folk earn higher income. The reliance on Ghana's neighbors like Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger for beef, mutton and chevron to augment imported chicken from Europe and America to meet the country's meat deficit is not a good indication of a sound economic footing for the growth of Ghana. This translates into a vicious cycle of job deficits among the youth who would otherwise find gainful employment within the agri sector. In 2017 alone, Ghana spent 350 million US dollars on imports of 158,000 metric tons of chicken. Currently, over 275,000 metric tons of meat is imported annually, costing the country almost 400 million US dollars. What we are in effect doing now is taking money from Ghana to pay for somebody this labor in his country, which is a huge drain on us. There is no doubt that the agri sector in Ghana holds the master key to unlocking the door of sustainable food security while bringing respite to an ever-growing population yearning for jobs. On January 9, 2017, at the New Year School, the Honorable Minister for Food and Agriculture, Honorable Dr. Ousue Free Yakutu, introduced the Planting for Food and Jobs campaign to stem the declining fortunes of Ghana's agriculture sector and to create decent jobs. His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado later launched this in April 2017. Today, Monday the 24th of June 2019, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado, launches yet another module of the Planting for Food and Jobs campaign, dubbed Rearing for Food and Jobs campaign. Realize that we launched the planting for food and jobs program. That one we launched first, and everybody was asking, What about the animals? What about we hadn't forgotten of the animals? The animals we are going to produce are going to depend on the crop residue. A lot of maize that are harvested, soya bean, granite, and all, all these ones that we normally will burn will be used as feed for these animals. After running the food, planting for food and jobs for two years, we think we've gone on a success note and we're producing a lot of animal feed that is otherwise going waste. So we decided that we'll launch this program. Now you can begin to imagine what saving almost 400 million US dollars annually can do to the economy of our dear country, Ghana. The Rearing for Food and Jobs campaign focuses on five key livestock species in the country, including cattle, sheep, goats, pigs and poultry. These species, except cattle, have been selected because of their shorter gestation period and their ability to thrive in every part of the country, coastal savanna, forest and interior savanna areas. The selected species also have a high propensity for income generation and export revenue. The program covers all the 16 regions of the country. The Honorable Minister of State at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture in charge of livestock, Dr. Nura Jiele, along with a technical team from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, have been busy. They adopted the bottom-up participatory approach and travelled the length and breadth of Ghana to ensure inclusiveness of identifiable stakeholders in all aspects of the programme. 
The outcome of this is a new and holistic eight-component implementation approach of the Rearing for Food and Jobs campaign involving supply of improved breeding stock, development and conservation of feed, nutrition and water resources, improving livestock extension and farmer education, disease control and surveillance, commercial livestock production, infrastructure support, application of e-agriculture, and program coordination. Ghana's indigenous livestock species are resilient to weather conditions such as heat, drought and disease. They are however generally small with low growth rates, milk and meat production. Rearing for food and jobs will provide improved breeds from neighboring countries such as Niger, Burkina Faso and Mali to cross Ghana's indigenous breeds to increase productivity. This will ensure an increase in size and better growth rates alongside resilience. Artificial insemination centers will also be set up to boost cattle production for enhanced milk and meat production. Dr. Nura Jele and his technical team inspected the livestock breeding station facilities across the entire country. Breed improvement is number one. So I had to visit all the farms. And some of the breeding stations are a sorry side. As I talk, this is about the best breeding station in the country. So you can imagine the others have been run down. And we have decided that we're going to revive all of them. The next time we come, you see tractors that are running here. You see balers, uh, this in forage harvesters that will be going cutting grasses for them to preserve for animal feeding. And you see farmers here who will be coming in for training and whatnot. So each of these is going to be de developed into centers of excellence for livestock farming so that people will come, learn and go and replicate. Feed is key to the successful rearing of livestock. Ghana is faced with the challenges of seasonal inadequacy of feed. Erratic rainfall pattern and bushfires also limit the availability of pasture. Water from which animals drink is also a challenge. Rearing for Food and Jobs has identified these challenges and is developing low-cost technological ways of transforming the millions of tons of crop waste into quality animal feed. Poultry farmers and feed millers will also be linked to the National Buffer Stock Company Limited for maize and soya beans produced under the mother planting for food and jobs campaign. Maize and soya are critical components of poultry feed. So that means that if we increase our production, we are going to be consuming a lot of maize, a lot of soya. So that already gives jobs for people who are into soya and people who are into maize production. The market woman who is selling maize that I buy my maize from is going to be making money from us. So for me, I think um, it's, it's a good it's a good thing, and it, the backward integration is, is, is clear and the benefits are also clear as well that um, if for example I was using just a ton of, of feed and I'm going to be using maybe three times or four times that that means that four times the use of maize four times the use of, of, of soya which is good for the maize farmer and is good for the soya farmer Crop residue, which normally isn't prepared and stored for future usage, will be utilized, while feed millers will be trained on the production of quality feed for poultry. Lamine Idris, a young poultry farmer and owner of Lamdi Farms and Trading Enterprise in Wa, produces his own feed not only for his own poultry farm, but to others as well who operate in the region. Mr. Stephen Mwinkara, a young hotelier and poultry farmer also produces his own feed. The rearing for food and jobs will give credit support to the private sector to acquire machinery for production of feed. Breeding stations will be resourced and equipped to become feed resource centers, while watering points will be established around existing boreholes to pump water for animals to drink. The example of Lamine and Stephen is testimony to the prospects this component holds for RFJ. The feed mill, a lot of people are working at the farm, a lot of people are working there. We have outlets we send the feed to, which 
this, this creates a lot of employment to people. I think if I even concentrate on this, it will be far, far better than doing any other thing in Ghana. A Greek extension has been concentrated around crops. Through the rearing for food and jobs, existing institutions will be built to meet the technological needs of livestock production. Farmer capacity in animal farm principles must be developed, including pasture development and management. A mentorship program will be implemented for emerging youth farmers. The conservation and utilization of feed will be encouraged with emphasis on value addition to primary farm produce. Farmers will be trained on the ability to prevent, identify and fight livestock diseases. Prototype livestock breeding housing structures will also be built for training purposes. The unrestricted mobility of animals due to globalization and deregulation mean animals move freely in and out of the country. This, coupled with the uncontrolled migration of birds, regional and international trade in animals, pose a challenge to disease control and could jeopardize the program if measures are not put in place to control disease. Animals brought in from neighboring countries under the rearing for food and jobs will pass through improved border livestock quarantine facilities to help reduce cross-border disease transmission. Veterinary laboratories across the country will be refurbished. Extensive disease surveillance will be undertaken, while vaccines for various diseases will be produced. Production of livestock in Ghana is largely still at the subsistence level. The RFJ campaign will create the enabling environment for farmers to embrace livestock production on a larger commercial scale. Outgrower schemes will be developed to create a platform for farmers to increase production. The African Development Bank, AFDB, has committed to support some components of the program. The Youth in Agriculture program will collaborate with the private sector to support farmers with day-old chicks for the production of broilers. 7,000 youth farmers are to be engaged and supported with broilers, feed and drugs to produce 20 million birds yielding 40,000 metric tons of meat. The prospects of the Youth in Agriculture program is epitomized by young people like Lamin Idris. For him, no one should wait to be employed. I completed University of Cape Coast. I went to UDS to do my MSc accounting. But it never occurred to me to look for a job anywhere. Even with the teaching, I'm thinking of exiting from that place to have time for what I'm doing. To talk of the employment I'm even creating for the direct and indirect jobs. We need all these things and we have abundance of land. The poultry farming, you can go into the soya, the maize. So one cannot just sit down and say there is no job. When we have all these opportunities surrounding us. It is clear that appropriate livestock housing, equipment for processing and marketing are vital ingredients for livestock infrastructure. Ten prototype livestock housing will be constructed on livestock breeding stations for training purposes. Rehabilitation of existing livestock breeding stations will be carried out. Processing plants will also be set up in the Bono, Greater Accra and Ashanti regions through a public-private partnership PPP arrangement under the One District One Factory 1D1F program. Cold storage facilities and cold vans, warehouses for storage of eggs, creation of market outlets to help farmers be productive are all critical in this component. Per the signing of MOUs, there'll be an arrangement between farmers and off-takers for marketing, processing and payment. Women and youth will be trained in meat processing by the Animal Research Institute. There'll be rehabilitation and assistance to existing abattoirs to help in the marketing and processing of meat. Currently, there is limited use of e-agriculture by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. The rearing for food and jobs will take advantage of the already existing e-agric centers and also partner with the private sector 
to use technology for electronic ear tagging for animal traceability, farmer registration, disease surveillance, and data collection. National, regional, and district technical committees have been set up to develop, implement, operationalize, and monitor the program. The government of His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado is poised and resolved to tackle challenges identified with livestock business and provide direction to the MOFA, development partners, and other stakeholders through the implementation of the Rearing for Food and Jobs campaign. The story has just begun.